Hello and welcome to episode number 26 of AEW Rise to the Top on TEW 2020. Uh, first of all, I just want to apologise for the lack of episodes recently. You know, life gets busy sometimes. We've all been there. I've had to take a bit of a backseat from this, but, you know, fingers crossed going forward we should be able to get these out a little bit more regularly than they've been coming out for the last couple of months. But anyway, that's, that's the admin out the way. Uh, let's jump straight into it. So this is the first episode after Full Gear, which got massive 80 rating. Last week's Dynamite got a 78, so let's just hope we can get anywhere near as good as that. Not really much to say, is there? We've got a new world champion. That's it. We've got a new trios champions. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, so let's just jump straight in to the show. Be back in two seconds. Okay, and we are starting off tonight with Shima taking on Jasper Cowan of the Four Horsemen. The only match that Jasper has had on Dynamite so far was that draw with Sean Spears. The draw with Sean Spears, of course. Sorry, yes. Um, it's undefeated on the main roster, and it is Jasper Cowan who picks up the victory against Shima. Um, 55 rating, which is actually pretty decent. I was expecting something a bit lower than that. Um, but yeah, 58 for Shima and a 56 for Jasper Cowan is pretty decent. Shima getting penalties. Jasper Cowan again not getting any, not getting any penalties, which is nice. Um, so yeah, I should say we're coming at you live in front of 4,755 people at the Aganis Arena. I really need to start pre-booking segments and matches and stuff because it will get more people to come. Because that is terrible. Anyway, <laughs> next segment. Uh, oh, okay. I made this segment too long. Um, so Judas starts to blast through the speakers as Chris Jericho makes his way down to the ring with a microphone. Darby Allen, you embarrassed us. You took us on one by one, and you beat every goddamn member of the inner circle. I've been asked the same question by every journalist, every fan, and even members of the inner circle. What's next? I was the first AEW world champion, and now I can't even beat some emo kid dressed up for Halloween. What's next is nothing. What's next is we regroup. But when we come back, you will better watch out. The inner circle will be back and better than ever. It's got a 66 rating, which is disappointing. Uh, I've made it too long. I made it seven, eight minutes, seven minutes. Um, it doesn't say that it was too long, but I feel like that means it was too long. Um, it doesn't say it was too short, I guess, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, Sangle got the crowd hotter, which is good. Jericho looked good, which is good. But yeah, 66 is quite disappointing. But yeah, anyway, let's talk about the story. <laughs> um, in a circle, looks like they're going away for a while after Darby Allen single-handedly defeated every single one of them in singles competition leading up to full gear. Uh, and then defeating Chris Jericho at full gear. So who knows when we're going to see Chris Jericho and the inner circle again. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, next up. We have a triple threat match uh, for the women. You know, get them on the card a little bit more. Um, so we've got Jamie Hayter versus The Bunny versus Chris Statlander. And in about that had a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. It is Jamie Hayter who picks up the victory by pinning Chris Statlander. And The Bunny apparently carried the match in terms of in-ring performance, which is very nice. Uh, and she did indeed. 52 to Jamie Hayter's 41 to Chris Stanlander's 35. But again, I really like Jamie Hayter. And hey, I've just realised. We have three women in this match and the crowd are happy seeing all of them. Amazing. Um, a couple penalties. The Bunny for a couple things. Chris Stanlander for a couple things. Um, but Jamie Hayter, not for any. Which is really nice to see. And um, the second got a 45 rating, which is... Not too shabby at all. It's not really chef's kiss worthy, is it, Charlie? Let's be real. Come on now. Uh, but 45 is a decent middle-of-the-card match, you know? Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next segment where we have a video plays on the Titan Tron of Darby Allen approaching a large house. He knocks the door and John Moxley opens it. Darby says, hey, I wanted to check on how you're doing. You took a hell of a beating, man. Moxley just grunts and motions his head into his house. Darby enters and Moxley closes the door behind him. 
So Darby Allen just checking on his friend and getting a 79 rating while doing so. What a bloody legend. Um, John Moxley came out of this looking excellent. Darby Allen worked the crowd well. John Moxley enjoyed going off script. Amazing, beautiful, all of this stuff. Um, John Moxley is an amazing baby face. Darby Allen should be an amazing... He is an amazing baby face as well. Too short. How long did I make this one? Four minutes. Yeah, I should have thought about that, really. That is too short, isn't it? I'm out of practice. All right, okay. <laughs> Since the last time I've played this game, there have been two updates. They don't up that update this game too regularly. That's how... It's been a while, okay? Give me give me an episode to, to get back in the swing of things. Um, but anyway, yeah, so Darby Allen and John Moxley... They're just good friends, you know? They're just buddies, and I think that's pretty nice. I really like the way that these two, you know, like the mutual respect that they've got in um, in real life. Um, yeah, and I, I kind of wanted to bring that in to this universe as well. Um, so let's move on to the next segment, where we have QT Marshall taking on Maxwell Jacob Freeman. Uh, and in a very short match, six and a half minutes, is MJF who picks up the victory with the salt of the earth making QT Marshall tap out in very quick fashion. Uh, QT Marshall had an earring performance of 36. MJF had an earring performance of 61. This got 56 altogether. Um, match was just regular. Pretty decent, you know. Second one was done to a hot crowd, which is good. Um, QT Marshall and MJF both penalised for low morale. But other than that, no penalties, which isn't too bad. Um, but now let's move on to the next segment. Wow, this is... Bollocks. <laughs> After this spatching, QT Marshall and angry at MJF grabs a mic. Cut my music, cut my goddamn music. Last Saturday night, I was fucking robbed. I earned that title. I am the fastest rising star in professional wrestling, and I deserve that TNT championship. Does anyone here know what's happening with Spears? Because I sure as shit don't. There is one man, though. One man who pulls all the strings and knows everything that's going on. So, Tony Khan. Get your ass out here and give me an explanation. Nothing happens. Fine. You don't want to come out here? No problem, Tony. I'll come back there. MJF starts running to the back. He goes through the tunnel and we see him charge towards Tony Khan. Suddenly he's surrounded by security and other wrestlers who drag MJF away, kicking and screaming. TNG Championship storyline automatically advanced. Uh, Seven got a 55 rating, so we still don't know what's going on with Sean Spears obviously at full gear. Sean Spears lost, which meant he's fired from AEW, but he lost by disqualification, which means that he's still the TNT champion. But has he been fired? Has he been stripped of the title? Everything's still very up in the air. We don't know yet. Um... The only penalty was low morale, which is really annoying, because 55 is bad. Seven minutes. I should maybe should have made that shorter. Um, I don't know. I just I thought you know he's got like I put him on like microphone or whatever. He's got like 87 to 97, something insanely good like that. I thought it would be higher. Same with Jericho earlier. Uh, I think I made it a few minutes too long, but anyway, these things happen. Let's move on to the next segment where we have this is more like it. Just p we've said this time and time again. If you're struggling, just bloody put Death Triangle out there. They'll they'll do amazing. Um so in a decent match, uh sorry, uh so it's Wardlow and the Hybrid 2 taking on Pac, Pentagon Jr. and Dragon Lee, the new look, Death Triangle and current AEW Trios champion. Champions, plural. Um, and in a decent match, it is the champions, Death Triangle, who pick up the victory in 14 minutes 34 when Pac pinned Angelico with a corkscrew shooting star press. Um, Jack Evans was really off his game. Pac had a performance of 76. Pentagon had a 63. Dragon Lee had an 80. He is so good. Um, Jack Evans had a 50 and off his game, which is pretty decent. Angelico had a 45 and Wardlow had a 41. Um, I wanted to get like Wardlow and these guys on TV, get them a bit more screen time, even if they're losing. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't still don't really know how the popularity works if sort of losing matches. I'm guessing, but if it's a bigger person, like you know, like obviously these are like the champions, does it just sort of do them good to last almost 15 minutes with them? I don't really know. 
Um, but anyway, it's got 77 rating, which is lovely. Okay, so let's just have a look at the dirt sheet. Um, Jack Evans and Angelico Wardlow all getting a lot of penalties. Pack for inconsistency. Pentagon for low morale. You're a bleeding champion, man. What are you doing? Um, anyway, 77 rating is beautiful. Saved the show so far. Really? Haven't they? Let's be honest. Uh, let's move on to the next segment um, where FTR are backstage being interviewed by Kathy Kelly. Uh, she says, you put in an impressive performance at Bull Gear. What's next for you guys? And Tully Blanchard says, I'm glad you asked, Kathy. I am honoured to announce that FTR will be defending their championships every other week in an open challenge. FTR came to AEW to prove that they are the best tag team in the world, and that's exactly what they're going to do. See you next week. So, bleeding, bleeding. It's uh, FTR open challenge every other week, every two weeks. They'll be putting their tag team championships on the line uh, against people from AEW, maybe people from further afield. Who knows? They said they want to be the best tag team in the world. Just saying. Just putting the idea out there. Just planting the seed in your brain that might sprout into tag teams, I guess. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, uh, Dirt Sheet, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Jake Roberts was the was the road agent, which is good. Kathy Kelly, always lovely to see. like Kathy Kelly a lot. She's great. Uh, Stegman got a 51 rating, which is decent. There's an ambulance or some sort of siren going past. I'm sorry if you can hear that. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next segment. And it is Tony Storm coming off the loss to Big Swole. At full gear, taking on the women's champion, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. And in a decent match, lasting 11 minutes, 45 seconds, it is the women's champion, Dr. Britt Baker, who picks up the victory. Tony Storm, she won her debut. I don't think she's won since then on a bit of a losing streak, Tony Storm. Um, but still, this match got a 58 rating, which is really nice. Uh, Tony Storm had a performance of 55, Britt Baker had a 46, which again, very good. 55 for Tony Storm is actually fucking sick. Uh, <laughs> fucking sick, lads, yeah. 55 rating, get in the back of the net. Um, fuck, I'm really tired, I'm sorry. Uh, Tony Storm, penalised for holding back and a poor gimmick. Britt Baker, penalised for holding back and inconsistency. And you know what it's time for. It's time for everyone's favourite part of the show next. It's time for Britt Baker and it's time for the women's room. That was not good. Uh, so after the match, Britt grabs a microphone. I told all of you that I would demolish Tim L. Dashwood and look what happened. And I've already got a new challenger. So please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome down to the ring the number one contender, Maria Manic. Uh, Maria Manic then makes her way down to the ring and Britt doesn't even let her get a word in. Wow, Maria, how does it feel to be a guest on The Waiting Room? Is this the highlight of your short, pretty lackluster career? Oh, you don't need to thank me for giving you this opportunity. You know, Maria, I am going to feel bad breaking your arm when we get in the ring to get... Maria punches Britt in the face, knocking her to the floor. She picks up the mic. I'm not going to put up with any of your bullshit, Britt. Get ready. I'm coming for you. Maria Manic, not laying down, not going to put up with Britt Baker's bull poo um, and getting a 44 rating in the process she did not do well with that script to follow I will try to remember that but we know that's probably not going to happen um, Maria Manic uh, penalised for improvising badly and for an awful gimmick but yeah so this is going to be the women's main event and I can tell you exclusively when this is going to be happening so the final week of December and the first week of January we are having a two week Dynamite special where over those two weeks all the championships will be on the line it's basically going to be like what Fighter Fest was in real life um, obviously in game I did Fighter Fest as um, a pay-per-view because it was sort of ended before they announced how they were going to do Fighter Fest I did it as a pay-per-view um, so this like New Year extravaganza is going to be over two weeks and yeah it's going to be it's going to be good that's what everything's going to be sort of building up to so we got a couple weeks to get everything ready for those huge two weeks of dynamite over the New Year's. And this Maria Manic versus Dr. Britt Baker is going to be there, front and centre, in the middle of the ring, 
for the women's championship. Um, and yeah, I'm really look. I really hope it's a good match. I really hope it is, but I'm not. Uh, I think maybe put Maria Manik in this spot is a bit too soon. But also, uh, you know, if you don't risk it, you don't get that chocolate biscuit. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next segment, uh, where we have the Rascals uh, taking on the Butcher and the Blade. The Rascals obviously picking up that huge upset victory, let's be fair, against uh, Proud and Powerful at uh, the Bayern for full gear. Um, and it is the Rascals who pick up yet another victory on a bit of a roll here to start off their time on Dynamite in AEW. Uh, and getting a 66 rating in the process, not too shabby. Um, so Wentz got a 69, Xavier, got, sorry, a 59, Xavier got a 69, which is great. Uh, the Butcher had a performance of 40, the Blade had a performance of 45, the Two Proud storyline has died with this segment. Ooh, what could that mean? Um, and the only penalty was uh, Zachary Wentz for inconsistency, which is pretty good. And that. That was the main event. That was the main event match, but we've got one, well, we've got two segments left, which is basically one segment. But the thing I was writing was too long, so I got split into two segments. So we've got two segments left, which is your main event of this evening. Uh, let's move on to the first of those final two segments. <laughs> so we come back from a break to see the elites in the ring with Cody holding a microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, a monumental moment happened last Saturday night. A member of this group became the AEW World Champion. Something I couldn't accomplish has been done by Mr. Kenny Omega. Obviously, I would have won too if I was up against Moxley, but that's not important. Tonight's not about me. It's about our new world champion, so please welcome Kenny Omega. The crowd erupts in boos as we see footage of the attack Omega laid into Moxley after their match. Omega comes down to the ring with Pyro blasting off in every direction. He reaches the ring and hugs the Elite. He takes the mic and lifts it to his mouth when we hear Hangman Adam Page's music. Kenny and the Elite start to go crazy in the ring. Hangman then comes out to the ramp with a beer. Uh, so this got 82. Amazing. Uh, the Fallen Mentor storyline has advanced and the Old Friend storyline has started. Um, Cody was a real star in this segment. Hangman Page was very underwhelming. Okay. Cody did a masterful job of improvising interactions with the crowd. Uh, Kenny Omega benefited from grass with public support. Yada, yada, yada. All good stuff. Um, no penalties. Amazing. The crowd are just loving this. Omega, the Elite, and Hangman Page... The full, the full former elite back together, but not in the way that we're used to seeing them. And let's move on to the final segment of the show, where Hangman Page raises the microphone to his lips. Hey, congrats, man. No, seriously, seriously. You look like a real champ sitting on an unconscious man and smashing his face in. It looked really tough. Now, I know what you're going to say, Kenny. You see, I know you. You don't team up with someone as champions for eight months without picking up one or two things. You came out here to say you're the best in the world, that you're untouchable. Then prove it. Kenny Omega, you do not get to break up our team, attack me, throw me off a fucking stage and walk away with nothing. I am challenging you, next week, Hangman Page versus Kenny Omega, the drunk cowboy one-on-one -on -one with the world's best bout machine. Come on man, if you're so good you'll get past me easily. What do you say? Kenny consults with the Elite and then walks out the ring, passing Hangman without even looking at him. Cody speaks. The answer's no, Adam, and we suggest you leave us alone. We strongly suggest you leave us alone. Ooh, bit of an anticlimactic end to the show there. You know, Hangman's still after Kenny Omega, and Kenny Omega's still refusing to even acknowledge that he is there. Uh, the Fallen Mentor and Old Friend storyline both continued. The performance of Cody was good. Hangman again performed poorly. Um, but still, 78 rating is a wonderful way to end the show. How we do it? No penalties again. Literally no idea what the difference is between those two segments because everything's set up exactly the same, but who cares? Um, an 82 and a 78 is still really nice. Um, so yeah, a lot of 
a lot of stuff going forward, you know, Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page still trying to get that match with Omega that's eluded him for what, two months, three months now, um, yeah, anyway, let's let's end up, let's see the rating, I don't, it's not going to be a 78, it's not going to be an 80, it's not going to be anything that high, I think if it's above 70, I'll be very happy, but I think it could be could be a high 60s, to be honest with you. Oh, 72. You know what? I'll take that. That's, like I said, you know what? Consistency. We're bloody getting there with consistency, aren't we? 44 was the worst rated segment. Um, 45 as well, but, you know, when we started this off, how many, like, reds were we getting? How many yellows were we getting? And now the last couple shows have all been... Like light green and dark green, so it's, it's pretty good. Anyway, uh, 72 rating. The show increased our popularity in 22 regions. Uh, we would have gained some more things, but we don't have any viewers there, so we're gonna have to try and bolster up our TV deals whenever we get the chance. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this episode of Dynamite. Uh, let's jump back to the menu. We'll go through uh, emails, see if we beat NXT, all that good stuff. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so we are back, and let's see what news articles we've got, Ring of Honor had a show, we had a show, NXT had a show, Fandango, ooh, shall I sign Fandango, probably not, uh, I like Fandango a lot, I think, you know, if Tyler Breeze, if this was Tyler Breeze, I'd sign him up in a heartbeat, I really liked, I've always loved Tyler Breeze, since his first NXT stint, uh, as like the, you know, the real arseholy supermodel, I've always thought he is incredible, and now you know all the comedy stuff with Fandango, he's just amazing, he deserves so much more, he could have been, like, I'm going on a tangent here, but he could have been, like, an amazing IC champion, like, for, like, a year, ah, oh, he's so good, so good, yeah, he's, he's so good, anyway, (laughs) All Japan had a show, Recovery for Big Mammy, Uh, she's back, PWG hire a referee, Jimmy Cordeas, and Ring of Honor again, looking to sign some more people. What a shock. Uh, so, we got a 72 rating with a 1.89 TV rating. Let's see how NXT got on. A 70 with it. Oh. Okay, so we beat them in the rating, but they, they did kind of beat us in the TV ratings by quite a few. <laughs> but they've got better TV deals than us, so really, we still win. You know. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, beating them on that, what did they have? The Ensemble, Keith Lee and Dexter Loomis defeated Public Enemy. Um, Bobby Fish and Fabian Eichner. Raul Mendoza, Matt Riddle and Dominic Dijakovic against Timothy Thatcher and the Singh Brothers. Uh, Cameron Grant. Uh, nothing nothing really, like, stands out to me as, like, well, Brian Kendrick and Mansoor defeat Team Gold. Jordan Devlin and El Hijo de Fantasma. Mansoor, is he good on this game? He's not very popular. He should be really pop. Oh, oh yeah. No. What am I doing? Is he good? <laughs> what are his skills like? He's not bad. He's got decent fundamental. Well, I guess fifty-five to hundred is a really big range. Um. Anyway. So yeah, we beat that. Let's see how we got up against Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor getting eighty because of course they do. Um. Like, what's even the point at this point of looking? Um. An interview with Shawn Michaels because, of course, why not? <laughs> Uh, Joe Hennig probably only getting a 47 rating that but a confrontation between Ray Horace and Joe Hennig then Ray Horace defeated him to retain the ring of honor pure title still not bad and the All Japan World Tag League um, yeah 47 I'm not going to even pretend to know what any of that stuff is um, let's look at the news so drug test fees and our, just our viewing figures and uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Like I said, thank you all so much for for waiting around. And um, yeah, this this delay has it's been really annoying for me, to be honest. <sighs> um, I've been wanting to to get this sorted, to get this sorted. I've been wanting to get back in the swing of recording episodes. Um, you know, like since I've moved, I'm all settled in now. Um, I've started working again. Um, so it's just you know, time is. Time is a precious commodity to me right now. And, yeah, I'm doing my best. But hopefully, um, we should be able to 
get these episodes out a little bit more frequent. I might have to change to like three a week. I think three a week might be slightly unrealistic um, for what I'm going to be able to actually produce. Um, but yeah, I'll see how things go. But yeah, thank you all for sticking around um, over this this period of inactivity. Um, I really didn't want to do it, but here we are. These things happen sometimes. And, um, you know, life gets in the way. And unfortunately, um, my job that pays me money um, kind of takes priority over doing this for 20 people to watch. But, you know, this is what I'd rather be doing. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, I'm really tired. I'm rambling. I'm going to go to bed. But thank you all for watching. Uh, If you did enjoy it, please leave a comment, subscribe, subscribe share it on, I don't know, Twitter any any of that good stuff Um, yeah and let me know what you're thinking of um, like AEW in real life, if you're enjoying the storylines, if there's anything that like they're doing let me know how your TW saves are going Um, I'm really interested in in sort of how that's all, how it's all playing out for people I follow the the, the TW Reddit um, and just read a lot of what people are doing Um, it's really good stuff Anyway, um, yeah, thanks again. I'm sorry again. I love all of you. Um, That's a bit weird, actually. I don't know you. You might be horrible people. Who am I to say? Um, (laughs) If you're watching this, then you're probably okay. Um, Anyway, I'll see see you around. (laughs) Bye.